name is Nalini and I am lecturer in Computer Science and Engineering Wing, Directorate of Distance Education, Annamla University. I am going to deal with the types of websites and their structures. In traditional days, when we are want to any data or informations or any other references, we are in search of books. But nowadays, the scenarios has changed. Due to the development of various technologies, nowadays we can search the data or you can retrieve the data, informations or any references in the internet itself. Just there are many types of software developed from games to application. There are many types of website has developed. Many users has visited the website. But how many of them know what type of website is? And how many of them are aware what type of website it is? So, the website will be generally classified into general categories and specified categories. First of all, we want to see the general categories of websites. Uh, there are three types of general categories of websites. One is called public website, another is called intranet, another is called extranet. Public website. A public website, an internet website, an external website or simply a website is one that is not explicitly restricted to a particular class of users. An external website is in the sense a public place available to anyone on the internet at large to visit. Intranet. An intranet website is a private to a particular organization generally run within a private network rather than on the internet at large. Next is extranet. An extranet site is a website that is available to a limited class of users but is available via the public internet. The major difference between the three basic forms of websites are audience because the public website is open to all while the extranets and the intranets are very exclusive. Another way of classifying the websites are dynamic websites and static websites. Dynamic sites. A dynamically generated site is a one where the pages of the site are generated at request or view time for the user. The dynamic site example is shown. Static sites. A static site is one where content is relatively fixed in that the user is unable to affect the look or scope of the data they view. In short, the visitor has minimal ability to interact with the site's content other than choosing the order in which to view content. The example for static web page is displayed here. Many users has visiting the dynamic website rather than a static website because it has more benefit than the static website. The dynamic website as created depends upon the browsing conditions. Now we are going to see about the site structure. There are two types of site structures are there. One is a logical structure, another one is a physical structure. Logical structure. A logical structure will describe documents that are related to other documents. The logical structure defines the links between the documents. The point to be noted here is, a website's logical structure is more important to user than its physical structure. Next, physical structure. A physical structure describes where a document actually lives, showing, for example, the document's directory path on a web server or its location in a database. Now we are going to deal with the logical site organization models. There are four different categories of models. One is hierarchy, another is grid architecture, another is linear and last one is a web architecture. First one we are going to see about a linear organization. A linear form is the most familiar of all site structures because traditional print media tend to follow this style of organization. 
Presenting information in a linear fashion is often very useful when discussing a step-by-step -step procedure, but there are time supplementary information may be required. Next is the basic linear organization. A pure linear organization facilitates an orderly progression through a body of information. This form might be good for a presentation like a slideshow to give new visitors an overview of the company and its products. The point to be noted here is that a basic linear is somewhat difficult to implement on a website because of the browser's backtrack features though it is possible. It is generally assumed that all linear forms are bidirectional. Next we are seeing with linear with alternatives. This organization simulates interactivity by providing two or more choices out of a page when eventually end up pointing the user back to another page within the sequence. Linear with options. A linear with option structure is good when the general path must be preserved, but slight variations must also be accommodated such as skipping particular pages. This type of hypertext organization might be useful for an online survey where some users might skip certain inapplicable questions. A linear with side trips. A linear with side trip site organization allows controlled diversions. Although the user might take a short side trip, the structure forces the user back to the main path preserving the original flow. The next one follows is grid organization. A grid is a dual linear structure that presents both a horizontal and vertical relationship between the items. Because a grid has a spatial organization and it is good for collection of related items. Hierarchy organization. This is the most common hypertext structure on the web is the tree or hierarchy form. The hierarchy start with the root page that is often the home page of the site or section. From the home page various choices are present. The choices tend to get more and more specific until the leaf page in the tree is reached. Narrow tree structure. A narrow tree presents only a few choices but many required many mouse clicks to get to the final destination. This organization emphasizes depth over breadth. A narrow tree may require the user to make many choices to reach a leaf page, but for some sites this is a very effective way of quickly funneling users into the correct category. Next is your white tree structure. A white tree or white hierarchy is based on a breadth of choices. Its main disadvantage is that it may present too many options as pages have numerous choices emanating from them. Next we are going to see about a web organization. In a pure tree structure there are no cross limits and backtracking is often required to reach other parts of the tree. Consider if your user is at page A in the structure, if you have to reach a page B, they have to back up two levels and then proceed forward. Then full mesh organization. A site that links every page to every other page could be considered to exhibit a structure called a full mesh. In a full mesh, the number of links is equal to the number of pages into number of pages minus 1. Next is your mixed form. While a white tree may present too much, too narrow a hierarchy will hide too much information. This structure is called mixed form or a mixed hierarchy 
as the tree is the dominant form of this structure. A mixed form is probably the most common form of site organization used on the web. Now we are going to see about the specific types of websites. The specific types of websites are categorized as follows. One is commercial websites, entertainment websites, navigational websites, community websites, artistic websites and personal websites. First we are going to see about a commercial site. A commercial sites are built primarily to support the business of some organization. Generally, the primary audience of a commercial site is potential and current customers of the organization. The common purposes for commercial sites includes basic information distribution, support, investor relations, public relations, employee recruiting and e-commerce. Next we are see about informational site. Informational sites are different from commercial site in the general purpose of information distribution. Government, educational, news, non-profit organization, religious groups or various social oriented sites are often considered as a informational sites. The primary purpose of the site may be to inform for reason beyond causing a transaction to happen. The information site will be shown now. Next is your entertainment site. These sites are generally commercial but they bear special consideration. The purpose of this site is simply to entertain the site's visitors. In other words, they are trying to sell an enjoyable experience. Now you have seen your entertainment site example. The next is a navigational site. A navigational site is a site that is generally a primary starting point for a user's online journey and serves to help people to find information and serve as many tasks for the user as possible to encourage them to stay or to at least continually revisit the site. The navigational site example is shown now. Community site is one whose purpose is to central location for members or particular community to congregate and interact. Visitors come to the site which is often very informational in nature. Now the community site example is shown. Next is your artistic site. The purpose of the site would be to inspire, enlighten or entertain its viewers. In some cases, the site may be simply be the product of the artist just trying to express his or her feelings, which is encourage thought and may go out of their way to avoid convention or logic. The artistic site example is shown now. Personal site. Personal pages may be built to inform friends or family or they might just be built to try to learn a new skill like HTML. Some personal pages appear to be literal shrines to their creators in some vein attempt to become famous through the web. Now the personal site example is shown. Now we are going to discuss briefly about these types of websites. Deep versus shallow sites. Another way of categorizing the sites is number of clicks required to reach a destination. Consider the choice between a narrow tree and a wide tree structure. A narrow tree would require the user to click numerous times to reach pages deep in the site. A wide tree would require fewer clicks but would require the user to look among numerous links for the one that interests them. Obviously, a balance between a link breadth and site depth is the best choice. Various web studies suggest that users prefer sites that require fewer clicks and are more satisfied with a wide selection of choices. A good rule of thumb is to consider aiming for a depth of three clicks before the user hits the content they are looking for. Porous and solid site or structure. 
When a site exposes all documents with public URLs, it could be said to exhibit a porous structure. A porous site does not force users to enter through common points such as the home page, major section pages and so on. Most users will probably enter through such pages, but theoretically any URL, however deep in the site structure, could be an entry point. In contrast, a site with a solid structure would be one that severely limits the entry points to the site to a few URLs or even a single URL. The advantage of a solid site structure is that it does not expose all the inner working of the sites. Another advantage of a solid site is by forcing users to enter through known points, their experience can be controlled much better. The table summarizes the basic pros and cons of the two site forms. First, porous form. The pros of your porous form is puts user in control, allows the user to enter any URL directly or enter by bookmark. The cons of your porous form is decrease ability to change deep pages without addressing outside linking. Next is does not easily provide a common entry point for announcement, setup or orientation information. The solid form process does not expose site structure, making modification and maintenance easier. Next is forces user to enter through known points. The next point is makes tracking of users more predictable. The cons of your solid form is removes user from control, may limit the effectiveness of outside search engines. We have seen uh, many types of websites and in structures namely general category of websites, specific category of websites, site structures and logical organization models of website. Uh, the structure of the site is often more useful to the designers rather than to the user. The user should aware of each and every site architecture when they are navigating towards a particular content to finish a particular task.